yes thank you for that and i'm going to click one more button to go on live stream uh facebook for all our followers on facebook to also part uh partake in this uh interesting educative topic I'm just going on live stream there now. So in a minute, that will be going on live stream now. So once again, good evening, everyone. I hope you've had a lovely day today. Uh, without wasting much of our time, you permit me to say good evening to you all. This is Side, Tis Valley Labor African Asia Minority Ethnic Community Group. We are here to promote uh, engagement, involvement, and participation of African Asian minority community in local decision making process, uh, getting involved in politics because we've realized the decision that is affecting our lives are being made by uh, decision makers. So we need to get involved, we need to get on board. Uh, I want to recognize some of our local community. Uh, Peacock, thank you so much for taking time to uh, join this evening. Uh, Castless, thank you. Ogamaka, Salari, Buki, Taiwo, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you for joining, Felicia. Oh, great. Um, Mariam, thank you. Mondale <laughs> Konkaro, that is a lovely, yeah. So I would like to welcome every one of you once again formally to this and feel free to keep chatting on the, make sure of the chat button. Let's know where you're joining from. Let's know who you are. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you for joining across, even beyond this valley. That's amazing, that's amazing. Without our, we're still waiting for our local MP to join. Uh, he has expressed uh, interest and confirmed his attendance. So uh, I, I will be looking onto this to see whenever he arrives to so be able to do formal introduction of him. Uh, thank you for that, everyone. Uh, without wasting much of our time, I would like to invite our guest speaker for tonight. Uh, she's going to do a good, well, introduction of herself. She's uh, my mom, she's my mentor, she's everything to us as a community. Auntie Nana Asante, she's the former mayor of Aro, yeah. Auntie Nana, good evening, madam. Thank you for joining us. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for the invitation. If you can please share the presentation, I'll just go into it. And uh, I think it'll be good if we um, engage with the presentation first. It'll be about 10 minutes. After that, we'll have a period of discussion. And you will see that the, I'm hoping that the presentation will trigger a lot of conversation and um, uh, discussion. And after that, um, after the discussion, we will have an action plan. And I'm hoping that you'll engage with the action plan, which will be about how we break the barriers and get participating in politics. So as I said, presentation first. So we're using this uh, discussion to engender conversation. We'll have questions if there are any. So hold on to your questions or put them in the chat. And then we'll come up with an action plan together. And it's this engagement that will help us break barriers. I'm sure people already have lots of strategies they use, but it's by working together that we can achieve that. Next slide, please. I don't know why my slide is not. Okay, okay, yeah, that's fine. Yes. So you want me to go to next slide? Next slide, please. Yeah. yeah, so introducing myself, um, Nana Asante, as my son has said, I used to be the mayor of Harrow in the municipal year 2013-14. I'm the secretary of Edpad Coalition UK. I chair Africans for JC Values. I am also the interim secretary of G Global African Congress UK. 
I moderate the monthly meetings of the conscious citizens and I chair the A-Connections Global Village. So that in a gist, without going to detail, at other times we can discuss some of these initiatives. Most of them are community. Africans for JC Values is very political, as is Global African Congress UK. Next slide, please. So I've already told you what the plan is for the evening. And so we go to one of my uh, inspirations. And uh, you can put the next. Her name is Shirley Chisholm. Uh, she ran for president, would you believe, it, long before Jesse Jackson, et cetera. She was the first African-American to be elected to Congress. And her slogan was unbossed and unbought. Um, she said, you don't make progress by standing on the sidelines, whimpering and complaining. You make progress by implementing ideas. And I think that is um, an important thing for all of us. In order to break the barriers to participate in politics, you need to understand the political system. You need to recognize that institutional racism exists. And you need to understand the language of your environment. Next. So I'll start next with the next slide, which will go into a definition of institutional racism, I believe is the next slide. I don't know what's happening with my- Okay, uh, McPherson defined institutional racism as the collective failure of an organization to provide an appropriate and professional service to people because of their color, culture, or ethnic origin. You find this in the processes, attitudes, and behavior, which amount to discrimination, even though it may be unwitting prejudice, ignorance, thoughtlessness, and stereotyping, which ethnic minority people endure. So that is a definition of institutional racism. And most people have uh, faced it and understand that it, it exists. Racism in itself is a social construct. There's nothing biological about it. There are no gene clusters you can find to find that, ah, these are African, these are Europeans, et cetera. But racism has tangible consequences. In terms of language, the reason why I want us to look a bit at language, we speak English, but English means certain things to certain people, the same language and different understanding. And if you look at it, it will emphasize, or how would I say, it will make racism worse. Uh, so, for example, when the British say, I hear what you say, what they mean, I disagree and do not want to discuss it further. But what foreigners or non-native Brits hear is, he accepts my point of view. When the British say, with the greatest respect, what they mean is that you are an idiot. And they say that, uh, and we will, or some of us will think they mean he's listening to me. When they say that's not bad, what they mean, that's good. And it's that understatement, which is a very British characteristic. And people think, oh, he thinks what I've done is not good enough. But actually when they say that's not bad, they mean it's good. And when they tell you that is a very brave proposal, what they are saying is you're insane. No sane person will do that. And you might hear, he thinks I have courage. When they say quite good, what they mean is it's a bit disappointing. And you might hear actually quite good because that's what they're saying. Another set of things to make you think, when they say, I would suggest you do X, Y, Z, what they, actually, what they actually mean is do it or be prepared to justify yourself. And you might think they're saying, think about the idea, but do what you like because it's a suggestion. But again, the British way of talking and when they say, I would suggest, it actually is an instruction. And when they say, oh, oh, incidentally, by the way, you would think that that's not very important. But what they actually mean is that this was the main reason I called you. This is the primary purpose of our discussion. When they say I was a bit disappointed that what they actually mean, and again, another master understatement, I am annoyed that. And you might think it doesn't really matter because they said I was a bit disappointed. And when they'll tell you very interesting, what they are saying is that is clearly nonsense. And you might think they're impressed. When they tell you, I'll bear it in mind, what they're telling you is that they've forgotten about it already. And you think, oh, they'll probably do it. So all this is very interesting. The last thing about language, um, when they tell you, I'm sure it's my fault. 
you might think, you might be wondering, why do they think it's their fault? What they're actually telling you is that it's your fault. And when in a conversation, a Brit tells you, oh, you must come for dinner. It's not actually an invitation. They're just being polite. And you might think, oh, I'll get an invitation soon. And when somebody tells you, I almost agree, what they're actually saying is, I don't agree at all. And you might think they're not far from agreement. They might tell you, I only have a few minor comments. What they're telling you is that, please rewrite it completely. And you think, oh, there are only a few typos, a little things I need to tweak. And the last point, could we consider some other options? What they're telling you is that I don't like your idea. I'm not prepared to champion it. And you think they have not decided yet. And it's just a word of warning that you're, we're speaking the same language and sometimes the communication is different. People understand something else. And if you add racism, especially institutional racism to this miscommunication, you do have a problem. And so sometimes you're not getting on and you think it's because they don't like you personally. You may be right, but it's good to also unpack some of the other barriers. So the barriers of language, the barriers of institutional racism. But the third thing that we need to consider when we're looking at um, the barriers to participation in politics is the political system. We need to understand that the political system we're in is one of representative politics both for local government and national government. We elect representatives who go there to represent our views. So it is something that we need to consider in order to get in there, it's a numbers game. If you wanna know more about the Labour Party, and again, this is, uh, well, I can please move the slides on. If you want to know more about the Labour Party, you need to, uh, look at, for example, Unite the Union has a very interesting leaflet. And that leaflet is a guide to how the Labour Party works. And that leaflet can be obtained by either contacting Unite the Union, or you can go on the Labour Party website, uh, www.labour.org.uk, and there's a page, How We Work. And that will tell you a lot about the structure of the Labour Party. Next. So when you look at the structure of the Labour Party, you've got annual conference, which is the ultimate decision-making body. You've got the NEC, which is the National Executive Committee. And the people on the National Executive Committee are members, trade union members, councillors, MPs, including the leader and deputy leader, and socialist societies. They are represented on the NEC. And in between annual conferences, the NEC, decides policy or implements decisions of annual conference. But feeding into annual conference, you've got the CLP and the CLP is the constituency Labour Party. You've got the branch, which is made up of wards and wards are the smallest local unit. And it's through wards that we elect our councillors. So councillors represent a ward. Branches are made of a collection of wards and collection of branches make up the CLP. The CLPs elect, or uh, how should I put it, rather MPs, members of parliament represent CLPs. So next one. So Labour Party jargon. If you go to a meeting for the first time, if you're not used to the Labour Party, one of the things you'll hear people saying ward, I'll just explain what a ward is. They'll talk about a branch. A branch is a collection of wards. They'll say CLP and you might wonder what they mean. They mean a constituency leader party. They say GC and by GC, they mean the general committee. And the general committee is at constituency level, the body that takes decisions. In between meetings of the GC, you have the executive committee, which is a smaller group of members who implement decisions and bring decisions forward. Then you have the LCF. The LCF stands for local campaign forum. And that body is very critical in selecting uh, people to represent, whether it's councillors or MPs, they are critical in that function. So it is a body that is important for those who are interested in advancing in the party. When people talk about the AMM, what they mean is an all parts, all members meeting. 
And this is uh, this came about at a time when participation in politics was so dark that you didn't have enough people at ward level, at GC level, at branch level. And decide the Labour Party in its wisdom came up with this idea that if we had all member meetings right across the CLP, we might have maybe more engagement and be able to uh, discuss issues. And then you have delegates. Delegates are people who are elected to go and represent the views of members at um, meetings. In order to break barriers, one of the things that I would say is that you need to break, be proactive. And you need to be proactive. You need to by confronting racism. You, I think you've gone to, uh, okay. Okay, let's go back, you're right. Let's go back to the Labour Party. Uh, in order to be active in the Labour Party, you need to understand the processes. One of the things that you really need to get to grips with is the rule book. Every year, the rule book is revised at annual conference. But what is in the rule book and what actually happens are often slightly different. So you need to get to grips with actual practice. And in order to effect change, you need to recognize the power of numbers. So I keep, I keep telling friends, if you join the Labour Party or any other party, don't join alone. Join with a group of, with a posse as it were. So you have people to support your call. You can support them as well. And it's good to understand that there are the rules, there's the actual practice, and the, the power that you exert because you have the numbers. So to summarize, Labour Party Annual Conference is the ultimate authority. And the conference, party conference decides policy framework manifesto, sets the party rules and comes up with a rule book every year. It considers policy papers from policy commissions. It accepts uh, delegates to conference and they take the decisions. Remember when I said delegates? So your CLP will elect delegates to go to conference and the number of delegates you elect depends on how many members your CLP has. So numbers matter. If you have a very small CLP, you can only elect one delegate. If you have a large CLP, you might elect several. So that is really what happens. And um, like I said, one of the big barriers is the fact that we are pathetic. So in order to, be, to break the barriers, we need to be proactive. We need to tackle racism. We need to tackle issues in the Labour Party and we need to tackle issues in the community. Those are critical things we need to do. And I would say uh, with the next slide that you need to be inspired by your ancestors. Again, Shirley Chisholm, who I mentioned earlier, she said, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring in a folding chair. So don't allow anybody to marginalize you. If they won't give you a way in, find your own way in. And we'll go in to discuss a bit. For, I'll speak from an African perspective because I understand African issues because I am an African. So for Africans, uh, the racism that faces us, we call it Afrophobia. And in order to understand it and know what is happening, we use the Adrukra symbol sometimes, which is Sankofa, it means go back and fetch. And the Adrikra symbol from Ghana actually is quite descriptive by telling you that you need to understand history to understand where Afrophobia comes from. But today is not for discussing it. It's to discuss how we thrive in spite of Afrophobia. So what has happened is the organization I'm secretary of in 2019 came up with a toolkit to give us the vocabulary to give us examples to validate our lived experience. It was arrived at by research evidence that, and we know that the impact of Afrophobia is real. There are microaggressions you will face as you interact in this society where we are minorities. And although I'm using Afrophobia as an example, these are examples that will apply to Islamophobia. Um, it will apply to anti-Gypsy racism. It will apply to anti-Semitism. There are people who will ask you things like, where are you from? And when you answer, they'll say, oh, but where are you really from? Where are you really, really from? That is in itself is an Afrophobic trope because what they're telling you is that because of the color of your skin, you cannot be from this part of the world. And, and this is to be discussed at another time, but microaggressions are something you must confront. And we all have different strategies. And I'm hoping that in the discussion, we'll come up with how we 
deal with these things. But one of the things that we need to do if we want to break barriers is to get involved. And one of the ways in which you get involved is to campaign for justice. So the picture you see here is a group of people who met uh, in 2016 when the Labour Party decided in its wisdom to suspend a member that we value. So the, an open letter was written and a few days after the open letter was sent and happened to be sent on Africa Liberation Day, which is the 25th of May, the person was reinstated. But like all campaigns that we must be vigilant and we must be, uh, how would I say, we must be persistent. Another thing that was done was we had a petition online, we gathered about 3000 signatures on another campaign and we took to Labour Party a head office at South Bank in near Victoria. And in those days, they would come down and receive the petition. And although this was an African led petition, you can see that there are, there's a European in there, a brother, and there's an Asian in there, another brother, because we need to work with allies. So yes, you might work in your community, but you need to identify allies who will support your call and help you when you are campaigning so that you can be effective. And last but not least, another campaign, and this one in the Northeast. This is Middlesbrough, where we've been campaigning for an independent investigation into children's services. And the reason we're campaigning for that is we've noticed that our community is suffering greatly from children being taken into care. Often those, dece those decisions are fueled by Afrophobia. We are asking for an independent investigation because we feel that the Afrophobia needs to be highlighted and it can only be done if there's an investigation that comes with, a, with terms of reference, which takes into account what the community is going through. For reference, those who are not aware, one of the things about Middlesbrough is that Middlesbrough Children's Services uh, was uh, given an Ofsted um, inspection rating of inadequate in all areas. So it, there is no, it is no, secret that the service is underperforming. But what is not being highlighted is the Afrophobia within the service. And I'll end with reminding you all to remember your roots. When I was mayor, one of the things I did was go visit Accra. And when I visited Accra, the mayor of Accra received me. And in good uh, African tradition, he renamed me. You know, when there's an event, you get a new name. And I was given the name Nadanswa which is a name from the Gamashi people and is from the Ga area. And it's to say, remember your roots because in those roots are your strength. So for further information, you can either contact Brother Olalekam or email me at impactcoalitionuk at gmail.com. And I can let you have the toolkit or any other discussion that you want to have. So thank you. Um, we go now to the um, questions and discussion. So if we can stop screen share. If you want to ask a question or comment, uh, do raise a hand so that either Brother Lalika or myself will recognize you and we can then um, have the discussion. This is really your time now where you are here to discuss what you think should be done, whether I have covered the barriers which actually hold back anybody who wants to go into politics and whether there are strategies that you have used to advance. Thank you very much, Antana. That's amazing. That's very, very educative. While we are still waiting for our MP, Alex Konya, I hope you will soon join us. I would like to recognize the presence of one of our uh, mover in Tees Valley, uh, Jessie Jo Jacobs. She's a political and social activist and a regional charity leader in the Northeast. Jessie Jo is working with Evolve UK to develop a new democracy network. She founded a charity called A Way Out and was the director of Northern Inclusion Consortium. She was Labour candidate for the Tees Valley mayoral election in 2021. Uh, let's join my hands to welcome Jessie Jo Jacob. She can start that uh, introductory and conversation of on this discussion session. Jesse, are you there? Hi, um, Ola, and uh, thank you, Sister Nana, for such a comprehensive overview of the of the Labour Party. And um, 
and I, I, I guess I wanted to share initially um, some early, a bit, little bit of my journey really into politics and and how I've and 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 how things have developed over the years and, and my why, because I think it's very important when we go into politics that we remember our why, because it isn't it isn't easy. It is one of the most challenging things that I've ever taken on. Uh, I've set up charities i've raised um, hundreds of thousands to help people in need i've been to um i've been ac across the country speaking about what we do and and bringing about change on an individual level and when you're a charity leader a community leader people um people praise you and they support you and they want to hear your voice the moment that you become a politician or you uh, you decide to run for a political role the world starts to change and 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 I, and I wanted to share really a few reflections um, in in why I decided to go into politics and and I, so I was working in Stockton Tees and running a young women's charity and I found that the decision makers, we're often making decisions that didn't reflect the ideas or the, the real concerns of the people that we worked with. Um, and if anything, some of the decisions that were being made were uh, adverse to the people who we worked with. And so money was taken away, not put in. Uh, the money was going into other play, other areas and it, it wasn't coming to some of the areas that most need, that were the most need was. And I became, mouthy I became noisy I decided that I wasn't going to be quiet anymore and and when you are that voice then people aren't as welcoming to to the voice and when you start to challenge decisions um you become challenged yourself and in 2012 I decided to join the Labour Party um we were a we we two years into a conservative administration already cuts were starting to be made and and the cuts to councils the cuts to youth services the cuts to children's services I knew were going to have a detrimental impact on people who who I'd worked with for 12 years uh, and we're seeing now the results of that you know the reason why social services across the country are are in uh, you know are failing into inadequacy is often because of lack of resource uh, and and money is taken out of those areas so so I've been in the Labour Party for, since 2012 but I didn't know any of this I wish I'd had Nana's presentation because I didn't know what a CLP was or a ward or a uh, you know all of these the chair how meetings work and I turned up at my first meeting really ready to go like I'm going to make changes and join the Labour Party and be part of this movement that brings Labour Party back into power and gets rid of the Conservatives and will reach to the communities and and then it, I found things like standing orders and having to put your hand up and wait to be selected to speak and because it was my first meeting I didn't get selected to speak all day and yeah it was all night and yeah it was an issue that I was really passionate about um but I kept on engaging because I needed to keep engaging because there was no one like me in the room and there was no one really like me in politics at uh, local level um or a national level and and I continued to engage and I tried to learn all of these things and this jargon because I knew that if I didn't understand it then I wouldn't be able to engage well so uh, in 2019, I stood to be the Tees Valley Metro Mayor. And that was my first ever time of standing as a political candidate. And it was a role that was, will bring change to the area, which could come with a big budget to invest into the areas that I believe most needed change uh, into uh, jobs and skills, the green economy, climate, tackling climate change, but also tackling some of the social issues, ensuring that people uh, are connected, that we can tackle social isolation and mental health. And, and I went through an, a gruelling election and 
and when you go for an and particularly when you're trying to uh, unseat the opposition what they'll throw at you is is big uh, and then but then some of the un, internal challenges are, are also there as well not everyone supports you just because you're in the same political family so uh, and then added a add a global pandemic on top of that it was it was a challenging campaign and and uh, but what came out of that kind of I didn't win um, but we created connections and we created a movement for change and and that is what is really important because if you're on your own trying to fight an issue you're just one lone voice whereas if you were part of a movement you're part of a collective then you are fighting with multiple voices, many voices, and it's the many voices that will bring about change. And it's the many actions that will unseat the opposition conservative, if, if you're standing in a Labour conservative area. Um, so so by being part of a collective is a powerful, powerful thing. And on my hardest days, I think, and I go back to a few key stories, a few key lives that, that I was touched going into politics. And I think of a young girl who was 11 years old who used to come to our youth club. And our youth club was the only thing that was on her estate that she could go to. She was suffering abuse in the home. She came often underdressed. Sometimes she had 10 pea packets of crisps for her dinner. And when we went to her home, she had no carpets on her floor and there was no food in the fridge. Young girls at 11 years old should not be living that life. We live in a we live in one of the richest nations on earth. How is it right that an 11 year old should have no carpets on a floor or food in their fridges and be living on Tempe crisps? And and so as a youth service, we were able to intervene to a level. Um, but if there's no funding for youth services, which was then who's going to be there to work with those young women? And young girls and if there is no government in place that wants to address issues of inequality and poverty who, who don't really care then then we'll see more of those girls and that's what we've seen you know the statistics are more four million more children four million children in poverty since the conservative government um this is uh yeah this is why we need we, we need people to turn up and I, I go back to her and I go back to my why. Um, and so you can learn the language and you can learn the processes and it's worth doing because when you get into a position of power, then you can be in that position to make the change that you know needs to happen. Wow, that is quite a story. And I think it's, you have actually underlined an important point that if you get into politics, there should be a why. Why are you doing it? Why are you engaging? So that would even give you the energy to go through all the negativity that you go through. And I don't know if you all picked up what I picked up. What Sister Jessie Joe told us is that there are also internal challenges. And that's what today is about. How do you overcome those barriers which are internal? External you expect, but most people don't realize that when you come into any political party, and it's not unique to Labour, there'll be internal challenges. There'll be people who wanted another candidate. And if it's you who's there, they don't want you to succeed. Even though you're standing for the same party, they wanted that position. And you need to remember that. You need to remember that it's the connections you make that will make you win. You need to create movements for change and that the collective is the most powerful. One of the most be really beautiful things is that if you know Labour Party history, and I think a lot of us don't know enough about it, but we need to. There was, uh, and you know, I'm going back to that African view of Sankofa, go back and fetch it. And so if you go back into Labour history, one of the glorious moments was the march from Jaro. And this was a march of miners all the way from Jaro, poverty stricken. Some of them had no boots and they marched all the way to London because London is where decisions were being taken. And as they, they came down, it was a powerful movement. 
And I think it must have frightened the establishment. Remember that there was a time when there was no Labour Party. You had the Liberals and you had the Conservatives. And then they played musical chairs and they couldn't care less about what ordinary working people thought about. But that Jarrow March, and if you haven't heard about it, please Google it and read about the Jarrow March. It was one of the most powerful, um, how would I say, um, demonstrations of what people can do, what they do together. And then there's another incident, the Peterloo massacre, a bit sad because people died, but people stood up. And for those who know, the Guardian came out of that, the Guardian newspaper. You know, so when you know labor history, it's a history which is inspiring. It's a history of change. The party's over 100 years old now. But when you think of it, that it was the Labour Party that brought in the NHS. And for those who don't know, and that's my third little fact for you, it passed with one vote. So for people who love the NHS now, don't be so surprised that they're trying to destroy it. And sometimes there are labor people who are also part of that destruction. But the whole idea of the NHS, an organization that cares for you when you're ill, so that you never have to worry about money like they worry about in America, it came through labor values. Remember Jesse's why? Because you had people who said, why do we want it? Because we want ordinary people to be able to access medical care. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how poor you are, if you're ill and you get to the NHS, you need to be able to access care. So these are the reasons. So all of you, I need you to think about what is it that makes you active in the Labour Party? Or if you're not active in the Labour Party, active in the community, what is it that makes you think that something needs to be done? What moves you? What gets you up in the morning? What is it that you want to do? What is it that you wish would happen? What is it you're trying to do? And I'll look out for if any hand so that we can actually have that discussion and know that yes, this is something we all need to do, why we do it and how together we get away from the obstacles that would hold us back. So I'm looking out for hands, indications, you can use the electronic hand if you're not on camera. Because I would like a little bit of discussion before we go into the action plan. We've got, we've got one hand, Claudi, uh, and Rickson, yeah. Oh, Claude. Unmute yourself, please. Claude, that is fantastic. Can you please unmute? You're in Leeds, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, gosh, you know where I'm from then. Yeah, I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 um, it was interesting hearing some, some of what you've said. I think I have a, a bit of a different opinion on, on certain things, especially around the Labour Party. Um, but again, for me, you, you said what motivates me, what, why do I do? I mean, I've been active in my community in Chapel Town for over 40 years um, and, you know, delivering stuff. And it was good to hear the lady talk about youth service and youth service delivery um, because, you know, for 10 years we have had austerity and that austerity has withdrawn um, services from young people and, and you know and we've been banging on about in an area like Chapel Town and certain areas across the country like Bradford, Huddersfield, Birmingham, Manchester where there's big black communities you know because it was our boys it was our boys now the girls are feeling the weight of it as well but it was our boys that were the ones that were getting into criminal activities but yeah I've been active in my community for over 40 years. I'm based at the Leeds West Indian Centre. Um, I, I, um, I'm a member of my Labour Party. I'm the BAME officer of my branch. I'm the BAME officer of my CLP. I ran for councillor in one area of Leeds in 2017-18. So I, I'm quite active in the Labour Party, but contrary to, I don't know what the Labour Party is like in, in, in Middlesbrough or in your neck of the woods, but um, what I would say is I have become very disillusioned with the Labour Party um, because I don't, I think they've been taking the black vote for granted for a number of years now. Um, and I think, 
you know, sometimes we, we do have to look back and before we go forward, but not to spend too much time in the past. And the, it was the Labour Party and the unions that gave the Windrush generation a very hard time when they came to this country. You know, um, initially, you know, and, and, and our parents were working for the NHS and got no respect for that, you know. So what, 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 I, what I like to talk about is not so much what they've done to us, but what we can contribute to the betterment of this country, because I think it's, it's been shown that um, the African Caribbean people that have been in the UK for the last 50 years have had a massive contribution to positive things in the UK that nobody gives us any credit for. Um, you know, the NHS, if our parents hadn't have come in the, in the late 50s, early 60s, the NHS wouldn't have survived until now. So it's nice to say that Labour created it, but um, the African Caribbean community, if it wasn't for their Labour and their work and their hands-on, the NHS probably wouldn't be there now. And even if you look at the NHS right now today, and my mother's in and out of hospital, um, it is the, the migrating people that are holding up the crucial roles within the NHS, whether it's porters, whether it's care assistants, whether it's um, the people pushing the trolleys to deliver food to the patients. Um, and even at the top end, some of the top doctors are black and African people. So um, I, I just wanted to get that over that sometimes you know, let's not as pigeonhole ourselves and, and let's not tear down people that might be allies to us going forward. I think the political makeup in, in the UK has been very anti non-white people. It has been very anti. Um, you only need to, and, and in London, I mean, they have a fair amount of councillors, a fair amount of MPs in London through the rest of the country, we are struggling to get representation for black and ethnic minority people. Um, uh, Claude, um, you're 100% right, so that I can bring other people in. No can problem. I, and, and come back as well. Um, yeah, no problem. I like a lot of what you said, and you're not the only one who's disillusioned. Uh, you asked my neck of the woods, I'm in the southeast, I am in London. Uh, I am I am in uh, Barnet at the moment. Okay. I am not uh, currently in the Labour Party for reasons I won't go into. But I used to be a Labour councillor and yeah. for 12 yeah. years. So I do understand where you're coming from. I mm. agree with you that looking back to look forward is important, but we need not dwell there. Yeah. And the and that you you make a very good point. Tonight is actually about what we do together to break those barriers. Mm. We've heard from our sister, Jessie Jo, about what she did. Mm. But we need to also come up together with some of the strategies we've used together. Mm. I agree 100% with you that we need to have allies. Okay. And you talk about the NHS. My mum came before the NHS was founded. She mm. started work in 1947 in mm. the NHS. So mm. that was be uh, before the NHS in Barnet mm. Hospital, mm. and then moved to Kingsbury Hospital, which mm. used to be a mm. hospital, mm. doesn't exist anymore. And then went to mm. Central Middlesex. I've, I've got so that. our story, yes, there. I've seen, I've seen the hand. Uh, our story <laughs> is complicated, but one yeah. of the things that we need to recognize is mm. that we're stronger together. And I think our sister, Jessie Jo, made that point. The collective is powerful. And you're not the only one who's disillusioned about the Labour Party. One of the big things that I've heard up and down the country, most people are asking, where is the Ford report? Where is that report that should have come out all this time and is still not around? So that is something that we can, it is, what I'll say is, let's not make ourselves targets. When we're talking about barriers, if you allow yourself to be shot down, then you've missed the point. We need to work together. We need to work with allies. We need to work collectively. We need to tap into your 40 years experience and find ways to actually change things. It's the only way we will make progress. Tonight is about how do we break down those barriers? And before we leave tonight, we have an action plan to put together. So there'll be a short presentation to pull 
uh, together some of the things we're saying now and how we can get this action plan together. So uh, could I please ask Bukitaiwo to unmute? And then after that, we'll have Kobil Peacock, please. So Buki and then Kobil, please. Yeah, um, sorry, I'm going to move slightly away from the grain and I hope you won't find that what I'm about to say is irrelevant, but in some way it is because it will, it does affect black people in general and it also affects um, the British community. So um, I'm actually um, involved in an, an activist um, group called uh, Yoruba Nation Now. And Yoruba Nation Now is actually advocating for a uh, Yoruba Nation. A Yoruba Nation is actually based within Nigeria. Now we are looking at campaign. We've already started our campaign across the whole of the UK and also um, inside Nigeria itself. Now the Yoruba people actually want to leave Nigeria. Reason being is because since Nigeria has been formed since 1914, Nigeria has not worked. Reason it hasn't worked is because the British came in, they purposely formed Nigeria for the purpose of trading. In that formation, they now put together nations within that space that have absolutely nothing in common. Uh, okay, Sister Buki, yeah. can I stop you a minute? Okay. Um, you are right that this is off topic. It yeah. is good to hear what you have to say about Yoruba Nation. Yeah. But can I suggest that you put that topic to Brother Olalekan so that there is a meeting that is dedicated to uh, Yoruba Nation, the whole campaign around... Uh, uh, Brother Olalekan, you Go ahead, ma. Unmute yourself, Aunt Nana, please. Unmute yourself, Aunt Nana. Hello? Yeah, sorry. And, and uh, Sister Buki, the reason I'm saying is that a meeting dedicated to this point you raise because yes. there will be people who support Yoruba Nation and there'll be country voices. And we yes. need to hear both voices. We need to also go back into history, as you said, that the yes. Berlin Conference, which divided Africa with straight lines, didn't consult the people. So you make a good point, and that needs to be discussed, but at the right time, right now, today, in order even to support you, because yes. you made a point about Black people and the British. Well, a lot of black people are British. So yeah. at the moment, with today's meeting is addressing people, Commonwealth citizens, black British people, African British, Asian British, who want to make uh, progress in politics in the UK. So okay. we need to focus but can on I, that. Is, okay, I'll no. move away from my, from my narration, because I did, I did say it was a bit off topic, but it's a good thing that I brought it because I would want there to be a meeting based on it. So I don't think it's slightly out of place. But it is out of place. I'm, no, yes. sister, can I just stop you there? I said, contact Brother Lalekan after this meeting and then arrange for a meeting where we will discuss this topic. You help to also mobilize the people to attend. So we have a vibrant discussion about okay. the issues so that if there is a campaign and when we go to action plan, you can even bring that as one of the actions because there's a gap in that presentation. And because we are on a time schedule, I'd like us to move to Kobil, please. Yeah, so I Kobil, wanted to ask, and is the Labour, would the Labour Party be willing to sort of... We, uh, if you listen to the presentation, Labour yeah. Party policy is not made by us. It yeah. is made by a collective. In okay. order to influence Labour Party policy, you need to be a member. You need to also... Uh, influence other people to support your point of view. I know that there are some Labour Party members who will not support you because they believe that the way forward is to have a Pan-African agenda. So it's a discussion, but you cannot do it from the outside. You need no. to be a member and you need to be part of the conversation. Um, okay. Brother Lalekan, as the AIM officer, will facilitate it, but do um, Put that in, contact him and do that. And let's okay, move can on. Can he put his number or his details? It is already seven o'clock. We're ending in a few. We're, we don't okay. have that much time. So can we please? It I'll, put, when I'll, put the, I'll put the email contacts on the chat. Yes, please. Okay. Um, 
All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thank Sister Kobe, can you please unmute and uh, make your contribution? Thank you, Sister Nana. I, I hope you can all hear me. Um, we can. can say, what a fantastic chair you are, uh, Sister Nana, moving things on. Um, um, in terms of myself, um, I am a Labour member um, of the Middlesbrough CLP. Um, and what I will say to you is that uh, it's not a welcoming place. Um, as much as I have tried um, to join in with activities, um, to, to have my voice heard, um, you are made to feel as though you don't belong. Um, now, I don't know if that's because I'm a woman or because I'm Asian or because I'm just not part of that in-group. I have no idea. Um, as to what, how you move that forward uh, within an action plan, I'm actually not very sure at all. Uh, the brother who spoke from Leeds, I think he is, um, is quite right. I think a lot of people are quite disillusioned by Labour, not just within our own CLPs, but nationally. Um, yeah. You know, um, the, the, the people that you see sitting at the top table, um uh, you know on the front benches um all white all white pretty much yeah um the the new leadership has not been fantastic in that respect um i joined in um oh gosh uh 2015 or something like that um and um and part of the reason i joined was because i just thought you know what i've always been a, a labor voter however um, I've not joined as a member to have my voice heard. Um, and there's things I don't agree with, there's things I do agree with, and I want to be heard. So I joined um, when we, we, um, we, we, we lost a general election. And I thought, right, okay, people keep talking about the Labour Party in Middlesbrough uh, being corrupt. Now, in order to be able to tackle any of that and to see whether or not it's true, I need to be a member and I need to be in there with them uh, to see and to challenge it if, you know, if I see it. You try and challenge the, and I'm going to say, it, you try and challenge the white members within our, within CLP in Middlesbrough and um, you'll get branded pretty much a trouble causer um, and, you know, not involved in anything. You, you, you know, you try and get yourself involved in things and they will find a way of trying to block you. Now, I have no idea, um, and I'm sorry, Sister Nana, but I have no idea how I can contribute to um, an action plan going forward when those are the sort of things that we face here, certainly in Middlesbrough. I'd love Sister to... Sister yeah. can I tell you that actually I, I believe in the glass half full together we can actually make that big difference. One of the things that all politicians love is votes. So if you can, and it's the numbers. So sometimes you can find a way. And I think that's what the conversation is about. I hear the frustration. I, like I you, totally, I totally yeah, and I'll let you come back. I'll let you come back. Uh, I, yeah, also I, joined, I joined the party after we lost the general election. I was a Labour voter, I wasn't a member. And I joined because I said, look, if I don't join, then I'm part of the problem because I'm not helping mm. to shift the party to where it should be. But like you, um, I'm not a member now. My frustration has taken me out. And that's another conversation for another time. But I'm very much committed to the left view. And, of and that's, that's, the, that's the thing, Sister Nana, is that um, I, like I say, joined like you did because we lost a Labour election, uh, or sorry, we lost an election. I joined because I wanted to, to, to help to make a difference, get in there, try and make a difference, and you get shut down. My skin colour isn't the right colour. Um, and just like Jesse, I'm too mouthy for, for, for the establishment. Um, and unless you are within that clique, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter uh, whether you're, um, you've got the, 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 the answer to be able to resolve everything because, now here's the thing, because it's not their idea. 
It's not their idea. The person who's at the top of the CLP hasn't had that idea, but you have. No, that's that's not going to be right for them. So they're, they're just going to completely and utterly discount you. Um, and that, and I'm sorry, but that is an actual real experience. But sister, told, do, not be, do not be sorry. That is what this meeting is about. If you notice, so one I of the things... Told, uh, sister Nana, I was actually told by somebody who is um, quite high in the CLP, in the Middlesbrough CLP, I was actually told that I had to uh, check my, um, my social media because it wasn't right to be talking to the opposition. Excuse me? Excuse me? How dare you? I was apparently too nice um by just speaking and saying hello to, to 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 the opposition when you have got people who are going to sit on a clp in a high ranking position and tell tell members that they are not allowed to speak or they are not allowed to do certain things on their social media well i'm sorry but that's not something i want to be a part of i've remained as a member because I believe in the Labour Party of yesteryears, let's say, when I was growing up, um, I, I believe in them. However, having said that, if I then look further back in history, my goodness, um, Labour have got some skeletons, but I'm Absolutely. not going to go that far back. I'm going to look at when I remember Labour as being a force to be reckoned with. Right now, not a hope and hell's chance. They are not a force to be reckoned with at all because there, there is far too much infighting. There are children who are throwing their, their, their toys out of the pram and, you know, pulling the dummies out and, you know, and stuff because, they, they, you know, they're not in power. And okay, so Sister Kobe, you've made the point. Can I bring in Brother Titi Lyon? And then, because, uh, and please don't be sorry about having your opinion. Your opinion is valid. It is because of your opinion that we're here. <laughs> you are right to have it. And what you're describing, other people are going through it in other CLPs. And what we're going to do when we do the action plan is strategies for dealing with those things. Because there's a way out. And sometimes you'll surprise those people because you pull the carpet from under them. But you have to understand it. You have to understand power and you have to understand how things work. So, Brother Titilayo, can you please um, unmute? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Sister Nana. It's been a very wonderful chair you're doing here. The energy and the vibrancy is what I respect so much and the articulacy. Thank you so much for uh, for that. Yes, um, I'm new in, in Middlesbrough and... Uh, Broly come mobilized me to, to be here and uh, he's discussed so much with me about uh, the Labour uh, Party, which was uh, the party I belong to, uh, maybe in Nigeria when we had Governor Mimiko uh, won his election in on those uh, in Nondo State, and I'm willing to be part of that. So I would just say I've had a lot of um, issues and uh, concerns of people, and I'm of the opinion that uh, let's move into the strategies of how these uh, uh, this will be corrected. And uh, like Brother Cloud said the other time, we sometimes we need to look back so that we can move uh, from, it's a very wonderful proverb uh, in Yoruba, where, uh, Yoruba State, where I come from. So, but one of the things I want to add is that the awareness is very, very poor about labor uh, in Middlesbrough here. If not for Lekon share with me, you wouldn't hear anything about this. Now we have a lot of uh, Nigerians, African coming in to the side who are of, um, election age and who can join parties. Who is talking to them? Who is relating with them? Who is letting them know? So we need some level of strategies uh, on awareness to this uh, to come in place. Then I'm a pastor and the place of religion, the place of um, coming into this uh, place, getting more people from, maybe from the church, from the mosque to know the values of uh, labor. So Sister Nana and uh, like uh, the sister that spoke last, what is that labor of old shared with us? Let us hear, let us know what it used to be so that we can design what it's supposed to be. Thank you. Okay. I think you've led us. Thank you so much for your kind words. And I think at this point, Brother Olaleka, can you put in the second presentation? Because we need to get to the action plan 
it will also trigger more conversation and it will tell people how you overcome some of the barriers. And, and it will answer some of the questions that both my sister Kobe has brought up and what Brother Titilayo has also talked about. So um, one of the ways in which you can actually break barriers is to join campaigns. And uh, one of the possible campaigns, I mentioned it in the first presentation, and it was, uh, it's actually um, the campaign in Middlesbrough. And this is a very Middlesbrough campaign. It is about the investigation, a campaign for an independent investigation to children's services. It is a fact that children are being taken into care on spurious grounds. And this is a campaign that will ad affect families, African families. And it will, in a sense, if you engage with that campaign, you're actually talking to ordinary people. You're also talking to young people because some of them are victims of this, this, the care system. And it is all of these things, but the campaigns need us to be engaged for them to be more powerful. And next slide, please. Uh, the police crime and sentencing and courts bill. Maybe you've heard it's been going through parliament. It went through the House of Lords yesterday. The Lords cut out 14 provisions, which people have been campaigning for. So the reason why this is important is that for campaigners, which most of us are if we're in politics, I've just mentioned the Middlesbrough campaign. We've been on the streets of Middlesbrough campaigning is that they're trying to criminalize campaigning. So if we allow this to pass, then we won't be able to campaign. Stop and search, um, those kind of things will just happen with impunity. So there is a campaign around that. This is a national campaign. And one thing that anybody can do, and you, we can also do, is encourage people to write to the MP. You have, I think, two MPs in Middlesbrough, and uh, one is conservative and one is labor. Write to both of them. If the idea is, and it goes back to what uh, Kobe was told not to engage with the opposition, that is foolishness. You cannot do politics if you won't talk to people, even if they don't share your views. How do you ever convince people? You talk to the opposition. Sometimes they'll come to your point of view, sometimes they won't, but you need to understand what makes them tick. You need to talk to them. And therefore I am with her that she's absolutely right to engage with people on social media. But this is another campaign you can engage in. Next slide, please. The Nationality and Borders Bill. Now this is a bill that is awful because it will affect our communities more than any other. But what people forget, if your family came from New Zealand or Canada, it can also affect you. If you think you're white and it can't affect you, it can. Because basically they are giving themselves close nine which will allow them to strip you of citizenship if you've got a British passport without even telling you so that you can even defend yourself if they decide that you are eligible for citizenship elsewhere. And it doesn't have to be in fact. So in a sense, they're, they're prepared to put this into law so they can break international law. So there's been a campaign that petition online has already attracted over 2 million, I think, signatures. They don't care. They seem to want to push that through. But we need to also be very clear that we will not let this go. We need to campaign about it. And for me, the salutary lesson is the 2014 Immigration Act. When that was going through parliament, we could not get people to engage with it. They didn't think it mattered, it didn't affect them. Lo and behold, we had the Windrush and Commonwealth scandal. It was only possible because we allowed them to pass the um, 2014 Immigration Act. And let me tell you, only 20 MPs opposed it. And of those 20 MPs, only six were Labour. So we need to remember that, that even Labour MPs have to also be kicked up the backside to make them act in our interest. And uh, Brother Titilayo, you mentioned the churches, etc. I will uh, bring up, what is interesting is the, the Nationality and Borders Bill. There's a tweet from the Sikh Council which is saying, yes, we're going to say it. Is this the time when we ban conservatives or other MPs who vote for this bill from six spaces and gurdwaras and not allow them to speak? You are not welcome to lobby in our spaces. And then somebody puts on a, 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 um, a message that I am looking at Nigerian majority churches. How about you? So in a sense, this is telling us that we have more power than we think. If Nigerian majority churches, if the black churches where the Caribbean people go, if wherever we are, 
if we refuse to give them a place to campaign, we are expressing our displeasure. But even more important, it's even more important that we even campaign to unseat them. And it is doable. No seat is safe if the people come out to vote. Because if you look at the figures, for example, to be elected as a councillor, you need about 2,000 votes. But a ward has about 8,000 votes. So many people don't bother to vote. If we're able to mobilize, we can change the status quo. So the next thing, so again, it's, this is to all of us. So they make, like the person said, I make no further comment, but Nigerian majority churches, I am looking at you. So all of us, so whether it's the Hindu temple, whether it's the, uh, the churches, we need to do something. Then there is also another campaign. For those who can look back, there was a time when we had the CRE, which was a body that campaigned for race equality. And then they submerged everything into, and we had a mishmash and nothing is effective. So there's a campaign that, that we must have a new race equality body. And that campaign takes its uh, cue from a recommendation from a House of Commons report that came up last year. In fact, not last year, two years ago in 2020, November. So it was after the George Floyd uh, murder, everybody was talking about race. And this was one of the recommendations. And it is important that maybe we look at that, which might help us. Because as Sister Kobiel said, she's being discriminated against, double discriminated against, one, because she's Asian, secondly, because she's a woman. But I would say that the being non-white, being Asian, is maybe something that maybe has more of a, an impact. Although being a woman also has an impact, if not, Jessie Jo wouldn't have gone through the problem that she went through. And the last campaign that I need to draw to your attention is um, equality before the law. As you know, right now, there's a scandal around Boris Johnson and the Downing Street parties where they said, bring your own booze, etc. At a time when people were dying alone because family could not visit them, you couldn't visit them in hospital, you could only talk to them on the phone and that kind of thing. People had to cancel weddings. So is it that there's no equality before the law? This is something that we need to not let go, even though there are many other important campaigns. So if this floats your boat, this is a campaign you can get behind. But then uh, the next slide, I'm asking people, what campaigns would you like to see? Because again, that is how you make change. That is how you get the votes that you need. You get engaged with people. You, you engage with young people. Young people, for example, a lot of them are interested in extinction rebellion in the environment. So what campaigns are you interested in? And that's what we need to think about as we draw up our action plan. Next. It's also worth noting at the moment, we are in the UN International Decade for People of African Descent, which runs from 2015 to 2024. So there are only two years left in it. But one of the things that you need to know to show you that race is very alive in the UK is that the UK government has said, and it started even before Theresa May, basically they are not interested. They have no plans to mark the decade, no specific plans to mark the decade. Yes, as members of the United Nations, it is incumbent upon each member state to mark the decade. And people of African heritage are in the UK, and this is how disrespectful they are of us. So what Brother Claude brought up is nothing new. It is very much there, but we need to look at this. This is what's going on. We are in the UN International Decade. And some of us are doing our best to make sure that it is meaningful for our community. Last year, the UN launched the Decade to Restore Ecosystems. That will run from 2021 to 2030. And this is about the climate emergency. So this is something, if you want to get around, it is something that engages young people. They care about this, about the ecosystem, about the environment, etc. And then for those who paid attention, in November, there was COP26 in Glasgow. Next year, COP27 will be on the African continent. It will be at Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. So this is something to bear in mind for November next year. If you are interested in the environment and you're interested in those campaigns, it is something worth looking at. But then I look at the, another set of campaigns from other things I've been involved in and other people have talked about. There are campaigns for a 15 pound minimum wage. And that's because our health workers are paid a miserly sum for the work they do and the way in which they support us 
it is obscene. And there are some people who believe that we must do something about it. It's not good enough to just go outside and clap for them on a Thursday. How do they pay their bills? Then there's another thing, parking charges for health workers at our hospitals. It is ruinous. And if you look at the, the, the kind of uh, shifts they run, it is sometimes not practical to take public transport. So some people are saying that, look, parking charges were waived during the pandemic, and then they're bringing it back. No, no health worker should pay parking charges. That's the campaign that some people are involved in. And that might have traction. And then there is fair trade. For those who, like me, are involved in fair trade, they complain about immigration. Well, if they pay the Global South fairly for the items they produce, most people only come here for holidays and go back home. So extend access to fair trade terms for the Global South. That is another campaign that we can get under. So uh, if we can go back to slide eight, please, Brother Laleko. Let's go back to slide eight. Because slide eight is something that I want you to remember as we go back into the conversation. What campaigns would you like to see? If there are campaigns here that you want to get be part of, it's a question of contacting our brother and he'll put you in touch with the campaigns and together you can make a difference. If there's no campaign near you, one of the reasons we are not able to break the, um, I would say the obstacles and barriers that they put to us is because we do not organize. We need to organize, organize, organize. That's the way in which you can break the back of the discrimination. You can get into positions. You can ignore them and form your own party. Because again, know the rules, know how the party works and get in there. If you turn up at selection meetings, because the, the Labour Party can be unwelcoming, that is quite true. But if you join with people around you, you can, if you have your why, as Sister Jessie said earlier, you know what your why is. You can have the resolve and the backbone to actually take over a CLP or a ward and elect the people you need to elect. And if the National Party comes against you because those people have more contacts than you do, you will have a national campaign behind you if you engage nationally. So can we stop screen sharing and then start another discussion and look at how we can take action together? So having heard what you've heard- Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much. Uh, just to say hello to those people followers of Facebook. You can also put your comments, those on Facebook. Thank you for joining. And those on Zoom, thank you for joining us well. Uh, do we have uh, Alice Cunningham MP inside, please? If you have him, let him signify or to know what name is using uh, yet we look we will look forward to welcome him again so uh let's 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 kick the ball rolling uh what campaign do we really want it could be local it could be national let's keep shut let's keep let's keep putting it on now atlana over to you yes yeah, so um having heard this we've heard from some of our members and from some about the some of the obstacles you face what i'm saying is taking a leaf from Shirley Chisholm's book. If they don't give you a seat at the table, bring your own folding chair. And that folding chair can be a campaign of your own. And if they make you unwelcome at meetings, which they do, they're very good at that. They've had years of practice in excluding people and they justify it to themselves. But what we can do is get involved in campaigns, whether it is local campaigns, not run by the political establishment, but run by the community, and thereby build a following so that if we stand for any position in the party, especially if we can convince our people to join, we have the votes to win. And that is the way to break the back of some of this obstruction and the barriers. It's only one way. There are other ways, and I would like to hear from people about what they think can be done to break the back of this discrimination that we face. And it's awful discrimination. I see my brother Adrian in the room. Can you please unmute and give us your view as to what we can do? He's based in Croydon, if I've got it right. Give us a view on how one can break the barrier of discrimination and get involved in the party and so that we can play our full role. Brother Adrian. Councillor Wright, I can also see you as well. Yeah, but let's go step by step. Bro uh, Brother Adrian, are you able to unmute? 
because we're thinking of strategies. I want some contributions around strategies that we can make, strategies we can take in order to ensure that we participate as fully as we can and we make the strides we need to make. Uh, Sister Cecile, can you unmute and give us your take for about 30 seconds? And then I want to go back to Claude and uh, Sister Colbert, who has spoken, if they see anything that excites their fancy. So Sister Cecile, can you please unmute? Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Belated. Happy New Year. I've only just joined, actually. So uh, uh, can I say that from what I've heard, particular Sister Nana, um, what you gave us as constructive strategic ways of making an impact, I have to say that I applaud you because it's campaigns that are essential because campaigns are part of the ingredients of politics at the end of the day because we come together to make changes, to make changes that can create a better society and, uh, um, and uh, improve uh, lives for our communities. So I agree with you entirely. It doesn't matter how small the campaigns are, get involved because that, that is one of the magnets for drawing people and getting people involved. Often people will not join parties just um, in ad hoc ways, but through getting them actively involved and empowering them in a campaign, that can then be the route to attract people to join the party. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, can I, um, our sister Jessie, um, because you have campaigned and you came in from the community and you came with the why, why do I do this? And you came in. Is there a comment you want to make about campaigns? And then I'll go back to Sister Colbert and Brother Claude. Um, yeah, just to say, I, I do agree. Like when, when we get caught up in process um that's when we could that's when it can be most divisive but what i for instance i've actually led a cross-party campaign i was the regional director for britain stronger in europe which was the project the campaign to campaign to stay in uh, the european union uh, and i actually worked with people from the broadest political spectrum you could imagine and when you're on the ground and you are knocking on doors and you're giving out leaflets on that issue that you care about, there's a unifying, uh, there's a unifying um, thing that it does. And and so I had Green Party, uh, Liberal Democrats, Labour Party, no parties, Conservative Party people who we would campaign together, we would eat pizza together, we would be we would be friends, we wouldn't. You, you wouldn't stop someone from talking if you're on a meeting about a campaign that you're passionate about. You wouldn't say, oh, your voice isn't needed here or stop causing trouble because you're unified in why you're turning up. So if your why is unifying, then then you're not going to get those sorts of barriers. And and actually campaigning is for me, it's like it's the lifeblood of, of what we do. And it's where the energy is. I don't get energy turning up on a Friday night to a constituency Labour Party meeting and going through, um, you know, standing orders and reports and like, that's not where my energy comes from. My energy is when we go, when we go out onto the streets, when we give out those leaflets, when we collect uh, food for food banks, when we, um, you know, when we're doing things together. So, so I would say, find those campaigns, those unifying campaigns, the stuff, and if there isn't a campaign, start your own like it, it, I think that's really important um but at the same time if your campaign is that the Labour Party needs to be a more inclusive party then then get together with like-minded people and work out a strategy for how you do that if if we need anti-racism training in 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 at, at party meetings or if we need to do uh, if we need to have training on on power inequalities and like they they are things that you can contribute so to say look I recognize we've got an issue here this is how we can address this issue so also like come with solutions 
um yeah and and there's always like if if you like there is always a campaign happening that's one thing you can be absolutely guaranteed of well, thank you so much for that. Uh, it, it's good to remember that energy comes from campaigning and you can get lost in the Labour Party and its structures and its and the rules, etc. Having said that, word of caution, if you want to get elected, as uh, Sister Jessie said and others said before, you do need to be part of a structure. It's the easier way. You can get elected as an independent, but quite honestly, it is easier if you're part of a structure. So I would say understand the party and its rules, but get your energy and your raison d'etre from something else and get get in there, get stuck in. And if you come to a party meeting with a group of people who've been on the membership register for a year, they don't have to go to the boring meetings. Maybe you've been campaigning with them. You know your neighborhood, you know everybody, and people will come out to vote for you. Turn up at that meeting, the selection meeting, and get selected. And all those people who've been excluding you will have egg on their face. So Sister Colbert, uh, can I have you unmute and then you uh, contribute and then we'll have Brother Claude. Um, yeah, um, I, I've listened to, to, to what you have been saying about um, campaigning. Um, just a little bit of history about me. Um, I, I, I actually was a director of a, a youth organisation here in Middlesbrough um, for quite some time. Um, and know how to um, do campaigns, know how to to deal with uh, communities and everything. So I, you know, I'm, I'm in in terms of that historically, like I say, I, I'm I'm aware of how to do all of that. I think my only issue um, has been the, and I think you know, uh, uh, Jesse used the word inclusivity, that um, the CLP here in Middlesbrough. Does, doesn't allow. Um, if you're not part of a, a certain clique, forget it. Um, you're not going to be welcomed in. You can still attend and you'll get the, oh, hello, how are you? And this, that and the other and everything. You, you will still get all of that and people will be lovely to your face. Um, but actually trying to get anything to happen, um, it just doesn't happen. And, and that's why I was so interested in joining this group to, to, to listen to the discussions because um, I've been trying for, for, for quite some years, um, you know, and it just doesn't seem to, to, to matter. Um, you know, you, you can have something absolutely fantastic to say, um, but if it's just if you're just not in that clique it's not going to matter it really doesn't matter um and that's why I was like hoping and very hopeful that we would have some great ideas come out of this meeting um yes I understand that um you know campaigning is um a really good idea um and I, I trust me I'm an anarchist at heart I'm a youth worker um for, with 30 odd years experience plus um so, you know, I, I totally get that. And I, you know, I've um, empowered young people to be part of councils. And in fact, you know, I had young people who, when Mo Morland was around and she was the MP of uh, Redcar, uh, they used to, you know, every time she used to come to Redcar, she always used to phone them up to say, come on, I want you on the campaign trail. So, you know, I've, I've, I've empowered young people to, to, to be part of campaign trails and, and get involved. Um, and politicise them. I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's young people who I've worked with in the past who are now uh, part of the the political strategy side of things and trying to push things forward. Um, but unfortunately, um, like I say, we what what you have, and I think probably most parties have it, and I don't think it's unique to Labour. I will say, is that you've got um, these people who sit at the top table. Um, who are older uh, or white um, and don't want to listen. They don't want to listen to anything. If you are a person of colour, um, then what they will do is, oh, I wonder, I wonder how they could help me. Not exactly. I hear you. Party, but how they could help 
me. You know, you know what? You've actually underlined some of the problems, and that's one of the barriers. If you're there to encourage other people to become campaign fodder, go on the campaign trail for them, you're welcome. That a lot, and that is maybe that is the heart of frustration to know that actually the party is institutionally racist and doesn't welcome your ideas. They want you to come and push their boulder. That's all. Once you're doing that, it's all well and good. So you're capturing something. What we are saying that part of the strategy, part of our action plan is not just is to be anarchist, as you're probably saying, and more deliberate about how we want to change things. If you ask them to be that you want inclusivity, the answer will be no. And even if the answer is yes, they'll sabotage it. I'm very cynical about things because, as I would say, is we haven't seen the Ford report. The Ford report, we, it was trumpeted as this wonderful report that will go to the heart of things that were going wrong at the top table, right at the heart of the Labour Party. And it, we keep on getting delay upon delay, and that in itself highlights something which is wrong. But what we're saying is that if we look at the glass half full, there are things we can do. That energy that comes from campaigning, that move to change things. If we come together, both locally and across the country, we become an unstoppable force. Where if you are, for example, you are sitting or you, are, you have an ambition, let's say, I don't think, I'm not saying you do, but let's say you have an ambition to get on council. We then come together and have a strategy how we support you. And I would say, don't wait till election time. We build up a following through the campaigns. We get to know who lives in an area. We get our own mailing list. We get our own contact list, which is not the Labour Party contact list, it's our own. So GDPR does not, does not apply. It's about all of that. It's about a strategy that empowers us and allows us to ignore, as you said, that, uh, what is it? that white, old and male um, contingent and get around them so that we can get what it is we want to do. Uh, Brother Claude, do you want to add to the, um, the strategy, what we should be doing and tell us what you're doing in Leeds and how maybe uh, Teesside can help you? Can we have Brother Claude and then you can come back? Brother yep. Claude? Brother Claude, you need to unmute yourself, please. Brother Claude, please unmute yourself. Hi. What yeah. was you saying now? I miss that, Sister Nana. What was your question, Sister? You unmute yourself, Sister. Uh, you can't unmute yourself now. But you've been good at unmuting yourself all night. <laughs> so, Brother Claude, what yeah. are you doing in your in Leeds? How do you think a group like us can come together? What campaign, what way do you think we could move forward? I think for me, number one, I think we need to build some bridges between the African Caribbean community and the African community. Them bridges have not been formalized and built. We need to establish because, you know, even the regions we're from, we're a bit divided and we need to be openly honest about this. So for example, even with the African community, not all Nigerians will work with Zimbabweans, will work with Cameroonians, will work with South Africans, will work with Eritreans. So we need to, to be, we really need to start from grassroots as, 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 as um, black people. We need to do that, number one. Number two, you know, I think that we need 
there is an, a kind of north-south divide in England where active black people in the south of England have a different mindset and a different battle that they're fighting than in the north of England, because in the south of England, it's very cosmopolitan in London and that in Middlesbrough, in Leeds, in parts of Yorkshire, it's not the same. And we need to have them open discussions so that we, 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 we can find some common ground to move forward. Because I think um, even amongst the African Caribbean, I, I mean, the Caribbean people, you know, Jamaicans, people from St. Kitts, people from Barbados, it's a bit like in England, and I was born in England, one of the first things I had to learn in England was the difference between the Welsh, the Scottish, the Irish, and the English, because there is a difference. And if you're not aware of the difference, sometimes you can be treading on people's toes and you're not even aware of it. And we need, we, we need a, 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 an almost African-Caribbean summit to talk about how we engage and move forward in politics. Because what I'm seeing now, and, and glad to see you online, Cecile. Happy New Year, my dear. Um, we need, we need, the certain discussions we need to be having, and we've not had them yet. What you have is groups of people having opinions on how to move forward. But so at the expense, and I heard it, I think Sister was talking before about, they might elect a person. But because another person was running for the same seat, they don't support them. So right now we've got a situation in the UK, whether we believe it or not, that if an African becomes a councillor, the Caribbean people don't think that the African person is speaking for them as black people. And we need to, and if a Caribbean person becomes a councillor or M MP, them African people, don't agree naturally that that person is also speaking for them. We, we have not even had that discussion. So that's for me a step going forward is how we can bring them groups together. Thank you, that's it, that's it, first thing. Can I just say Claude um, and to the rest of the group, um, what you've just said about um, the the different uh, groups in terms of the Caribbean group, the African group and things, that's actually very true um, also of the Asian community. Um, so, you know, you'll have Muslims, Hindus, yep. Sikhs, etc. Um, and you will find that they don't agree with each other either. Um, and it's, um, you know, so... So when somebody, but the, the, the issue that we all, all, you know, of us find, you know, is that the white people aren't looking at whether or not you're uh, black African, black Caribbean, uh, you're Asian, uh, or, it, well, when you're Asian, are you, you know, from Pakistan, from India, from, you know, whatever, they're not looking at that. All they're looking at is this. They're looking at our skin colour and just lumping us all together. And I think... You know, that's what unifies us um, as, a, as a group of people is, is, is our skin colour. Um, but um, the, 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 the white people aren't, aren't actually seeing that. All they're seeing is, like I say, the group of us. But uh, as individuals, um, we, we know the, the, the differences and things. Um, it's, it's, re it's really funny because actually I'm, I'm married to a white person. You'll have probably been able to tell from my surname. Um, but, um, and it's true. He, he will even say to me, oh, so, you know, is that person, you know, Muslim? Is that person blah, blah, blah? Do you know what I mean? And I, I'll get that even from him. But, you know, because, you know, what, the, what people see is just what's on the outside. They're not seeing anything else. And you do have all of those issues, not just within the, the black community, but also the Asian community. So let's say, I mean, uh, um, Sister Nana, I have no intentions of going for councillor or MP or anything like that. I like to sit on the sidelines and heckle. Um, so <laughs> that's me in that respect. Um, but um, 
what, what I will say is if, say, for instance, I wanted to go for local councillor um, for my ward, um, I probably wouldn't get the support of the Muslim community because I, I, I'm, I'm from a Sikh background. Mm, yeah. You know, yeah. so it's very similar to what you're saying. And we still have that within the Asian community, and you also have that within the black community. But what unifies us, like I said, is you know our skin colour, because white people are not seeing anything else other than the skin colour. Sorry, anyway, I just wanted to make that point. No, well done, thank you for stepping in. I don't know if you realise my computer froze, so I've had to use another thing to get in because I couldn't unmute I could hear you and I couldn't do anything so okay. that is why okay. I'm sorry for being off but that was okay. it okay and okay so, brother Claude, I, I, thank you for that contribution I mm. hear you about the unity but the unity is there when you campaign and there are areas where yes people will not support each other because they are not from the same community but then there are areas where people have overcome that they recognize that we are all, let's say, African, we're all Asian, we're all minority. And it's campaigns that tend to unify us. When people come together to campaign on a subject, they then get those links and relationships. And Sister Cobell, even if you do not want to go for counselor, maybe you want to manage your CLP. It, it, whatever it is that you are interested in, it's something that one can look at. Okay, oh, you want to get your ideas through, because that was one thing that you said several times. you got ideas and nobody will listen. So if we want your ideas to be heard, we need to get a CLP that is responsive, that is inclusive, and that will only happen if we take action, and we take action together. And I think that for me, that is what we need to do. We need to think about the campaigns that we can get together, you know, that we can run. I, and that will help us. I agree with that. Can I come in? And I think I think the key to that is we really need to get more people to become members of the party, of, of, of whatever political party. I mean, if a person can, if any person can get 50 people in their CLP or in their branch to, you know, and them actually members, they can do anything they want. What we really need to be doing is, and I don't know how we do this, because even when I was in the Labour Party, I was arguing it. Because it's financial, because to, to become a member, you have to pay a something like, is it £57 a year? How, I, I can't remember how much your membership is per year. So... We've got to get our people to understand that that fifty-seven pounds is 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 not as important as the power it gives us within. Because because that's where we we've got the problem. Our people will will campaign with us, but they won't become members. And we need to get more. When I joined, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to convince people. And obviously there was unemployed people that could become members. I think it was for three pounds. There was under eight, eight or eight young people that could become members for three pounds, you know, but really joining to, to, to become political active, we need, we need to encourage our people. And I've seen this done by Asian people in the past where a, a guy that wants to run, and, and I'm sorry, a, to the lady that was on, but she might find, but he would pay the, the um, subs of yeah. Yeah. a Brother number Claude, of people per Brother Claude, year. Brother Claude, this is being recorded. There's certain things you do not say on recording. So uh, we know, we. I, I get your point, but let's also learn that strategy. There are certain things, you're 100% right. There are things that people do in order to get the numbers up. But there are some things you know you do not say. And so, Brother Olalekon, I'll beg your indulgence. And, 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 and I did say that was in the past. I didn't say that was in the uh, present. Agreed. So, But what I'm saying is, the fundamental is we have to convince our people to become members and to pay, the, to pay that, that, that fee per week or per year. If we can get our people 
if they if they put some money in and, and feel like they're contributing, then they'll have a voice. I often say to people, you value something that you pay for. If you if you if you if you're making a contribution, you value that. If you're just turning up, you don't value it because it's like I'm just giving of my time. And, and really, we need to educate our people that the power is becoming members. Whether you want, whether you want to be a, it's not, you don't become a member because you want to be a councillor or an MP. You become a member so that you have a voice within the situation. So that's what we need to be promoting. For me, if we can, if we can convince in, 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 in most communities, in most CLPs, people to become members, they, they can then come to the branch meetings, they can then come to the CLP, they then can get delegate status, they then have a vote. Well, That's thank the you only that. way. That is a brilliant suggestion. But what I'll say, Brother Claude, I want us to go a step back before we even encourage them to become members. Because being a member, there are things that you have to overcome, the hostility, the obstruction. You need to maybe get them involved in a campaign they care about. Once they are involved in that, and then they understand that, look, the campaign can only go so far. If you want the party to take it up, you need to control the party. You need to get in. So I noticed, Brother Titilayo, you've got your hand up. Can you please unmute and... Yes, um, thank you once again. And uh, I just want to add my voice to the beautiful and uh, intriguing deliberation going on here. Um, strategy is my thing. And I would be happy to lay my voice on what you're saying here. So I'll just try to be as short as possible. Um, you're talking about campaigns. I appreciate this. And you're talking about them join, people joining the party. I also appreciate this. But um, the Bible says something, if you permit me to say the good book. Psalm 23 it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That means people are wanting. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Now, let me put this together. A wanting person is looking for a pasture. Looking for a pasture, he would see on green pasture, he would see green pastures, he would see without pasture. Now, he says, he maketh me to lie down. Lie down means he stays, he sleeps, he settles down there. Uh, Wonderful people in this forum. I want to tell you, people are looking for green pastures because they have wants. And that brings it to values. Before people would, we need to create moment for the sake of time. We need to create designs of values of people's wants before they cannot join a campaign. I like what Sister Nana said, that supports anything hindering them from getting those values. And there are about two um, uh, agents that I want to look at here. Education, okay, three, education, religion, and economy, even the social media. What are we putting on the social media to get these people that they like? One, I get, I get off that. The education, how is the school that is people's want getting, uh, people getting support from these, from our organizations, from our party so that they can now want to come and lie down in that green pasture. Keep looking at that, my Bible verse. Coming to lie down in that green pastures. Um, economically, you said something about the Asians now. Economically, they've created green pastures where people are lying down and they could tell them, this is where the greener pasture is. This is how we make this place green through this party and they can do that. If we don't bring up these values, people will not just come up with a campaign. Lastly, religion where we come in as pastors. Uh, Broly has been doing a great job on the campaign for uh, parenting and every other thing, which is also my own professionalism. If the church would come, uh, it's a very strong place where the people are gathered. And uh, this is why I choose to be a different pastor. I want to sit, I want to be part of national issues, even as we are preaching and as we are praying. So for me, I'm telling Broly on that it's time that we, people are having issues with parenting here. Let us bring out a valuable program from the church where people see value on our on pastoral care, on how they can retain their children, how they are not losing them, apart from the great job of uh, Raleigh is doing. People believe in prayer. Then when we come together here, the people are there. 
they see value here regularly. We meet there every month. It's not going to be very it's not going to be political. But after this one, people can meet in twos and in threes, and they know that ah, I am in this green pasture. I'm lying down here. This can be done. This can be done. This can be done. So the Nigerian churches that are big, that are getting things, is because they are a great pastor in the level of religion. People are there together, and they can say, we are going this way. We can also do that here in Middlesbrough. We can do that here in the UK. And watch out, I'll be leading one of the wonderful movements of awesome prayers for parents to get their children. And any other good thing can start from that. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. But so you're already involved in a campaign. You're praying for parents to get their children back, and that's part of it. And I think because you brought in uh, religion, before I call uh, the next person, because we are in the last few minutes, I need to tell you about Christians on the left. Now, Christians on the left is a Labour Party society, and basically they came up with this thing. They said, "Look, a lot of Christians do a lot of good work." You know, for example, they see people falling in the river and they are busy there saving them, fishing them out of the river. But there comes a time you need to go upstream and find out why are the people falling down in the river so that you stop that happening. And that why are people falling down in the river is what politics is about. And too often people stop at prayer. Prayer is essential. So as a Christian, I would tell people that, yes, you need to turn up. You need to show up. You need to be where decisions are made. But you need to also, you need to back it up with prayer. You need to go into the places you pray and tell the people that they need to come out and support you. Because if they are not with you, the decisions that come out will not be decisions that support your values. Because you're 100% right. It's about the values we have and the values we seek. That's right. And for those who, uh, a, little, a lesson in history, that the Labour Party is a mixed bag. There was a time, yes, most of us tend to join the Labour Party because we believe, well, on the balance of probabilities, it is more likely to support the things we believe in. But the Labour Party is institutionally racist. You just have to look at its history. If you look at the Immigration Act, some of the horrible immigration acts came from the Labour Party. So we need to also recognize that the institutional racism that is part of the country permeates all organizations. And the Labour Party is part of it, which is why my presentation said to break barriers, you need to look at institutional racism, you need to look at language, and you need to understand the party and the political process. In order to understand all these things, you need to get dug in. You need to talk to people who know the party and hear their stories because their stories are important. It is silly for all of us to reinvent the wheel. We learn the lessons and we move forward together. And the reason I brought campaigns is that a lot of people who will not engage with politics will get involved in campaigns. And when they get involved in campaigns and you get alongside them, you let them understand that true change only happens. If you're a believer, you know that prayer is part of it. If you're a political person, you know that you need to be stuck in the politics. Or they'll scupper whatever you're trying to do because you, are not, you do not have the political power. So we need to look at all these things and understand that it is the collective that is important. When we come together as people, we are very powerful. If we come together with values, we're even more powerful. And we need to recognize that. So tonight, what is wonderful about this Teesside A meeting, we have attracted people from across the country. We have people joining from Croydon, from Barnet, from Leeds, from Middlesbrough. We didn't have time to go around the room and ask everybody where they're calling from. We even have people calling from Nigeria, probably. And we need to understand that this is why we need to work together. We need to support Brother Olalekam, who has managed to carve a niche in this party. He has put a foot in the door and he's holding it open. So we need to support him because the problems we've mentioned exist. We need to work across communities. We need to support our Asian brothers and sisters. 
because as Brother Claude was talking about the division between the Caribbean people and the African people or Africans from the continent, we heard from our sister Kobiel that there are problems in the Asian community. From the outside, we think all is rosy. It isn't. If you go into the European communities, there are divisions. As Brother Claude told us, when he came to the UK, he had to learn the difference between the Scots, the Welsh, the English. We see them as white people. They are not the same. If you even see the continental people when they come, they are different. But we know that if we join together with our values, with our vision, with things that hold us together, we will go places. So now I'll hand over to Brother Olalekam because my thing is echoing. I don't know if it echoes on your end. That, so that because we've just got five minutes. So maybe you can tell people how they can support in Middlesbrough. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's amazing. It was great to have all of you tonight. Uh, like I've said, this is a group for ourselves. As a platform, it's a safe place for us to have this dialogue. And I can tell you, by the numbers, we can move the mountain. It is the number we need. And tonight, with this number I'm seeing, I know we can turn things around. Particularly, as Sister Kubi had mentioned, Middlesbrough, I'm, I'm a living testimony to most of things you had mentioned in here tonight. Uh, and I know you know that it's a struggle. Oh, it's, it's never an ending process. We win it in every generation. Freedom is never really won. So honestly speaking, I know I know what you are saying. And Jesse Joe Jacobs, I, I, I quite understand the perspective she's talking about. Even they even throw the same word, they throw to you, they throw it to Joe Jacob, even in Middlesbrough's PRP at some point. But that's a story for another time. So like Katina have mentioned, we've all mentioned before come up together tonight, uh, thank you for that. Is there any specific topic that interests any one of you here? Please, I'll put my email address on the chat box. Email, feel free to email. Any interesting topic you are looking at that you want us to bring on board is open to every one of us. Uh, that's what I will use to close for tonight. Uh, thank you very much. Follow us on Twitter, on Instagram. Anyone want to say something today? Yeah, can I ask, uh, it, what, what, where do we go from here? Will there be another meeting? Because I think we ought to follow up. Because if it's indeed giving people strategy, empowering people um, and assisting, uh, then I think we need to, uh, part of our strategy is to have some sort of, uh, some sort of sustainability in terms of what we're uh, attempting to do. Thanks. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's a continuous process. Like uh, the previous event we had is about power of voting, power of voting, register to vote. That was the first step we, we enlightened people about. And tonight we are talking about what are the barriers. Now we've come up with some ideas now. So we need to take those ideas forward. That is why we said uh, we need to look at what next are we doing, which is we are I put my email address there. You look at what we've discussed today. The last, the first event was about uh, registering to vote, power of voting, and now tonight we did barriers. So you can move forward from this. And I'm, I, I quite agree with you, sister. So we need to keep this sustainable. So definitely we, you will hear email from us following up this tonight's meeting in a few days time to bring out all those plans together and we move, we move from there. Did Aunt Nana, you want to say something to that? No, I think you're right. I think one of the things that is needed is the action plans. We just started touching on it. We need to do proper action plans and strategies. An action plan for each uh, group, whether it's Middlesbrough, it's Leeds, whichever, whether it's your ward, and then personal action plans. What is it that what is it that you want to put forward that you are being blocked from doing? And how can we together come up with a winning strategy to get your views across? So that is the sort of thing that we need to do. Maybe we'll do it more as a workshop where we're going to break out rooms. We need to test the technology and make sure that we can do that. And maybe the next meeting will be a more practical discussion and we come out with practical concrete plans that we can take forward. 
thank you very much. Uh, on that note, we've got one minute. I want to say thank you so much for joining tonight. And those of you following on Facebook. Only uh, on Taiwo's book it Taiwo's up is up for a while. Really? Uh Book it Taiwo. Yeah, yeah sorry. I want one, sorry. One minute I, I... go the ticket. One minute yeah. go to the ticket. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just want to say very quickly, just to wind up. Um, sorry, I got I got thrown out by my internet connection. But very quickly, I wanted to touch on what one of our brothers that said about the um the so, there's a sort of um divide between the African Caribbeans and the um and the Africans. I think even if we want to sort of gather ourselves, we need to build on that closing closing that gap. Because even if you want to build, um, I think if we can close the gap then we can now build on, you know, gathering more people into the, the Labour Party. But that trust needs to, I think maybe calling more meetings amongst us Africans and, 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 um, and Caribbeans so that that trust can, can build up. Because that divide is there and I don't think it should be there because there's no reason why it shouldn't. We're, both, we're all brothers and sisters coming from the same continent. So that's what my contribution. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. That we will sustain this meeting. So we're going to have more meetings, definitely. And don't be surprised, election is coming up. They need us. They know how important our votes are. So yeah. I'm very sure. So yeah. And the final that. topic: How do we mobilize the black churches? Because they're everywhere, irrespective of where we are. I'm from the Midlands. I'm from Derby. How do we? Can we find? Uh, a practical way of linking into the local black churches for their assistance, please. Middlesbrough has developed that recently now. So we are launching the first interdenomination uh, outreach this February, first Saturday, February. I think uh, Pastor Feb is leading that. So if we do that as a benchmark, other local neighboring CLP can benchmark that uh, model, which is exactly what we are doing with children's services. We are the one that started the campaign for independent investigation to children's services. And you can see from the whole England, it has been declared inadequate, unfit for purpose in all area. Children's social services is unfit for purpose. And that is what the white labor leader cancel us. They don't want to hear. And we need to push that out as much as possible. So sister, sister we will definitely keep you in touch. We will keep you on this uh, email list. So I'm very sure we can make use of the same model. Okay, so thank you everybody and have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your week until we meet again. Hopefully we'll make some practical progress. Take care, God bless you all. Thank you very much. I've put my email address there so that we put all those plans together. Feel free to email me, feel free to email and we put those together. Thank you so much. All of us join us on Facebook. Thank you, God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night.